Now I'm going to move on to out of the tools in this toolbox here, and I'm going to move on to the rest of the geometric constraints, which you find in the rest of the, the geometric constraints tool palette. The first one here is called constraint constant, and I'm going to ignore that again just for a minute and come back to it later. I'm going to deal with the rest of these first. Uh, the first one we're going to do with now is called constraint point on. So let's just bring a note down for that. Point on constraint. The point on constraint deals with a point, obviously. I'm going to draw this with a thickness so that we can see it. That's a, a normal microstation point used from the place active point button. And in this example, I'll use a line. And to constrain point on, we select the point then select the line and accept. And the usual thing has happened here. Both graphical elements have been converted to constructions. We have a point construction in there and we have a line construction there. And as well as that we've had our geometric constraint graphic has been added as well which looks like that arrow there. And what point on constraint does <coughs> is it tells that point to always remain on that line. So that's test and prove this. As I move the line around the point always remains on it and as I try and move the point around here you can see it slides along the line. And you'll also notice that even as it slides past the line it still remains on. This is because linear constructions are of infinite length even though they're graphically represented on screen with a finite length they're actually of infinite length. There's more to the point on constraint. We can constrain points on circles. So select the point, select the circle and accept. And now as the circle is moved, the point always remains on. There's even more to the point on constraint. Um, this is a very useful one and very important. If we have a line and instead of constraining a point on the line we can actually constrain a circle on the line because when we tell instead of picking a line a point to be constrained on a line my, if we pick a circle instead of the point microstation will understand that we mean the center point of that circle. So let's do that. Let's pick a circle instead of a point and now choose the line and accept and now the circle is constrained on that line. And that that will go for a lot of constraints all the time. Is that microstation will let you lose, use a circle for a point because it will it will automatically choose the, the center point of the circle for you and it's very handy and a good one to remember. So that's the point on constraint. The next one to look at is point at and I'm going to put in brackets here intersection because it is a point at an intersection is what we're looking for. So let's draw two lines that intersect. Let's convert these lines to constructions. I'll use I'll use the fixed angle constraint. Now we have two constructions within which intersect and we want to get a point at the intersection. And there's two ways to use this tool. I got my text editor open again. The first way is to constrain a given point or circle at the intersection. Intersection. And the second way is to create a point at the intersection. 